Hey everyone, welcome to the first video in the Algebra 1 series. In this video, we're going to be looking at the question, what is a polynomial? Now, a lot of our work in algebra is based around polynomials, so it's going to be important for us to be able to identify and define what a polynomial is. So jumping right in, a polynomial expression is either a term consisting of a number, a variable, or their products, for example, 6, x, 4y, x squared, negative 20z to the fifth, or the sum of one or more terms, for example, x plus 7, 2y minus 3, x squared plus 5x minus 1. So looking at our examples, let's start with the 6. Any number is a polynomial. So 6, 25, negative 2, all would be examples of polynomials. Even the number 0, that one always throws students. 0 is technically a polynomial as well. Moving over 1, we have x, which is the typical variable we use in algebra, but it really could be any letter, really any symbol, to represent the variable. And then we have a couple of more complex single-term polynomials, 4y, x squared, negative 20z to the fifth. So you'll notice different variables, different letters, different exponents, and a few of those have coefficients as well. And then if we take single-term polynomials, and we combine them with either addition or subtraction, we've created a larger polynomial. And that's what we have here, right? This polynomial has two terms, x and seven by themselves would be single term polynomials, and we've combined the two with addition. To complete the definition of a polynomial, a polynomial must contain non-negative exponents. So for instance, x to the negative first power, 11x to the negative third plus 2x to the fourth, are two examples of expressions that are not polynomials, right? X to the negative first, that exponent is a negative number, okay, no good. In the next expression, one exponent is negative, one is positive, still no good. Now the reason we write non-negative exponents is because X raised to the zero power, which something we don't really see, is good. And where does that happen? Well, that happens with numbers, so for instance, 7, the number here, technically is 7x to the 0 power, right? And we'll look in one of the coming videos why x to the 0 is equal to 1, okay? But this is equal to 7. So that's why we define it with non-negative exponents. So now that we've defined a polynomial, there are a few that we give special names to. So we have a monomial, a binomial, and a trinomial. So a monomial Prefix mono meaning one, so that's any polynomial with a single term. So one example would be 5x to the fourth. Five by itself, a monomial. X to the fourth by itself, also a monomial. Okay, it's a single term. There's no addition or subtraction signs connecting multiple single term polynomials. Binomial, prefix by meaning two, so 2x minus three. Right, 2x is a monomial, 3 is a monomial. We've connected it with addition or subtraction, in this case subtraction. So we have an example of a binomial. And then a trinomial would be three terms. So x squared plus 2x minus 3 is an example of a trinomial. Now, any polynomial that has four or more terms, we generally just refer to as a polynomial. So now that we've got a few definitions out of the way, one thing that we can describe a polynomial with is its degree. So the degree of a polynomial is based on its exponents. And why we look to find out what the degree of a polynomial is, is when we get to graphing later in this course, knowing the degree can help us know what the graph is going to look like. So we're gonna start with the degree of a monomial, which is the sum of the exponents of the variables in the term. So I started us off with a pretty complex example. It has three different variables in the monomial. X doesn't have an exponent written, but we have to understand that there would be a one there. Okay, so we have X, Y, and Z as the variables. Now looking more closely at their exponents, X is raised to the first power, so we have one. Y is raised to the third power, so plus three. Z is raised to the second power, so plus two. So that's equal to six. Notice I didn't take any exponent off that coefficient because the degree is only based on the variables. 
right? Five is a number, not a variable. So we don't worry about any exponent associated with that coefficient. Now, building it to larger polynomials, the degree of a polynomial is the highest of degrees of its monomials. So if we look at each term individually, the one that has the highest degree will give us a degree of the whole polynomial. So for instance, we have 5x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 11. Let's look at this first term as if it's a monomial. So 5x to the fourth. The degree here is going to be 4. Right, there's only a single variable. That variable is raised to the fourth power. The middle term, negative 3x squared, only one variable, x. It's raised to the second power. Degree would be 2. And then 11, there's no variable there. So this is, again, where we technically have x to the 0 power. Okay, x to the 0 power means it's degree 0. Or another way to think of this is if there is no variable, only a constant, the degree would be 0, right? No variable. So now looking at the degree of each individual monomial, each single term of our polynomial, in this case trinomial, the highest is 4. So the degree is 4. Okay, so this polynomial has a degree of 4. Now, one way that knowing the degree of each term can be helpful is writing a polynomial in what we refer to as standard form. Okay, so in standard form, we arrange it so that it begins with the highest degree monomial and continues to arrange monomials in descending order. And this is just nice because if we're trying to compare answers, if everyone's written their answer in standard form, it's going to be really easy to check our work. Or if we're trying to add or subtract polynomials, having each of them written in standard form is just going to make our life easier for finding the like terms that we have to combine. So in the example that we've been given, we can see that it's not written in standard form. So let's go through the degree of each individual term. So we have a degree here. First term, 6x squared. The degree would be 2. 12x to the fourth, degree of 4. Negative 3x, degree of 1. 15, no variable, right? So we said that's degree 0. And then negative 9x to the third, degree 3. So we have to put it so that the degrees go in descending order. So that means we're going to start with 12x to the fourth, follow that up with minus 9x to the third. Then we're going to have plus 6x squared, followed by minus 3x plus 15. So there we have a polynomial written in standard form. Let me just fix that 6 so it looks a little nicer. There we go. Okay, a few more definitions to finish off our polynomial video. And that's going to be leading term, leading coefficient, and constant term. So these are a few things that you may hear your teacher refer to. So leading term is the term of the highest degree that would be written first if the polynomial is in standard form. Leading coefficient is the coefficient of that leading term. And the constant term is any term with no variables. So a constant term is a polynomial, just a nice reminder of that. Any number is a polynomial. So in this example, 5x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 11, it is in standard form. This is an example that we looked at in a previous slide. So then the leading term is the term that comes first. So that's 5x to the fourth. That means the leading coefficient, I'm going to abbreviate that, is 5. Now, if there wasn't a number written, if it was just x to the fourth, the leading coefficient would be 1. And then our constant is 11. Now, every polynomial is going to have a leading term. But not every polynomial has to have a constant. Okay, for example, right, if I had x squared plus 2x, that's an example of a polynomial without a constant term. Okay, so just something to pay attention to. 